The Northern Natal Education Department says that damage to schools caused by vandalism and looting amounts to more than 100 million rand. The department says that a total of 144 schools have been affected. 130 of them will cost less than half a million to repair per school, while 14 will cost over half a million each. Uh, let's uh, get uh, more on this and dis discuss this further. We're joined via Zoom by Kwasi Natal Education MEC, Kwasi Mshengu. Mr. Mshengu, always a pleasure to see you. Thank you very much uh, for joining us here on SABC News. Thank you, Sislo, and greetings to you and uh, to the list. I mean, to the viewers of SABC. Well, it wasn't a, a great start, not uh, smooth sailing at all when it comes to the return of uh, schools. Uh, where are we right now, and have things significantly improved from uh, the first day when we heard quite a few uh, of those uh, complaints? What's the situation uh, now in KZN? <laughs> Well, Flo, things have really significantly improved uh, from the last time we, 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 I mean, from the first day of schooling. Mm -hmm. um, we have been working uh, flat out to make sure that all our schools are indeed operational, including the schools where they, they were vandalized during the, the civil unrest, which we had experienced in the past few weeks. Uh, there are about 137 of those schools that were affected but we can confirm indeed that uh, all of them now are operational. Uh, but obviously we continue to improve the situation, more so now given the fact that uh, we are expected to have a full complement of primary school learners, which is a challenge there that we continue to grapple with. But in terms of uh, operational uh, schools being operational in the province of KwaZulu-Natal, uh, all our schools are indeed operational. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, you talk about uh, the unrest uh, that was really felt uh, quite significantly in uh, KwaZulu-Natal. How much of the uh, damage to property, looting, and uh, what we uh, obviously witnessed, uh, you know, had a huge impact uh, on the schools? We certainly did hear about some of those schools uh, that were uh, damaged as a result, and uh, one wonders how much of an effect it had on the return to schools. Well, the damage, uh, the estimate currently is just over 100 million um, in total. Uh, obviously, the damage that was caused in our schools uh, varies from one school to another. Mm. There are schools that were gutted with fire, uh, three of them, and out of the three, uh, the engineers have advised that one of them must, must be completely demolished. Uh, it means that we need to start afresh everything. In other schools, uh, we'll have to repair the classrooms that uh, were gutted with fire. Mm. But in the other schools, we are counting the damage of uh, the ICT equipment uh, that uh, we had uh, invested in our schools, uh, the NSNP equipments, and then the, the other general uh, infrastructure damages, such as replacement of windows and doors that uh, were, were actually uh, damaged. But in total, the current estimates sit just over about 100 million that we need uh, in order to, to repair these schools. We must also indicate, uh, Sisflo, that um, unfortunately, this damage uh, adds on the on the damage that uh, is, is currently within the, the, the backlog in terms of uh, repairing of schools. You will remember that in the past we have been reporting schools that have been damaged and vandalized by criminal element, uh, by criminals. Yeah. But uh, there have also been schools that have been damaged by the inclement weather conditions. And uh, we have not been able to successfully repair all those schools. So the number keeps on growing while the resources shrink uh, almost every financial year. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the, uh, the issue of uh, resources, Mr. Mshengo. I was speaking to uh, teacher unions uh, in, in the week, and uh, one of the issues they complained about is the fact that you know, schools are uh, under-resourced. And my concern is that your department will fall back on the issue that there was unrest, there was damage to property, uh, there was looting, when even before that there was an issue of lack of uh, resources. I mean, when you look at the fact that um, some learners are saying Saying that social distancing at some of the schools is impossible because you know the classes are small uh, and one wonders why there was never a push to have you know extra classes built during the time uh, that learners were um, away and in fact uh, learning remotely so some of that actually then directly falls to the Department of Education itself in terms of the fact that the issue of resources was always there even even before uh, uh, the, the the unrest and I, and I wonder if uh, that's something that you know you you, you look at and say that that is something that we were, uh, in fact, uh, responsible for. The issue of resources as this flow has indeed been a challenge uh, for, for, for quite some time now. And uh, we've been raising this matter both uh, uh, internally uh, within government, but also we've been uh, quite frank with the public to say 
uh, the department continue to to operate under strenuous uh, financial position mm. uh, this financial year uh, we lost about 6.3 billion that was cut from our budget uh, which means that a number of projects including infrastructure projects uh, then got affected uh, and whereas it included even the placement of educators in, in, in our schools was also uh, affected. So the issue of the or the damage suffered uh, during the unrest actually added on, a, on an already strenuous department, which was unable really to afford everything that uh, it, 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 it intended uh, to, to, to perform. Uh, it does seem a uh, flow that even going forward, uh, we are going to continue under this strenuous position. Uh, the provincial treasury has advised that, uh, that in the next financial year, we are likely to lose a further nine billion as a department of education, mm. and uh, that's 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 a very very unfortunate situation that we find ourselves in. We are unable to procure a preferred a preferred classrooms or what is called mobile classroom to 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 comply with uh, the social distancing as great I mean as primary uh, school learners are back uh, in full swing, precisely because uh, there is no money to procure those uh, mobile classrooms. Just today, I signed off a letter to the minister to say. Uh, we are unable to have all uh, primary learners, or rather, all schools, uh, primary schools in the province, accommodating uh, all learners as as the directives um, have been issued. Uh, demands us to say all primary learners must come back to school, precisely because there is congestion in classes, and uh, we are unable to meet the one meter social distancing mm. uh, that is that is required. And uh, we have said uh, in this letter, we request the authority of the minister to basically allow us to continue in those affected schools with a, a, a rotational timetable such that uh, learners will continue to alternate the dates. Otherwise, uh, we'll be in, in in total breach of the COVID-19 uh, regulations and our schools will become super spreaders. And that is as a result of the financial strain that uh, we have as a department to say we should be able to, or rather we, we would have, in, would have preferred to be able to provide mobile classrooms so that we divide those classes, but the reality of the matter is that there is no further money to be able to procure those mobile classrooms. So we're left with the situation uh, to say learners must continue to rotate. So in a nutshell, this flow, what we are saying is that um, indeed uh, the, the 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 damage that suffered uh, that we suffered because of this of the recent unrest just added on the already strenuous yeah. uh, situation that we are facing as a department. All right, uh, Mr. Mshengu, it's always a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you very much for giving us your time here on uh, SABC News. And certainly all the best uh, with all the logistics and everything going on in uh, KZN schools at the moment. Thank you very much. See you, all right, that is uh, Kwasi Mshengu, of course, uh, the Kwasi Natal Education uh, MEC.